and we are officially live. So today on Lifestyle Medicine, I have my dear amigo, Josh Schneider from, where are you? You're in Broomfield, Colorado, yeah? That's right. Yeah. And you're owner and proprietor of Cloudgate Healing Arts. That's correct. Yes. yes, with your wife, Gretchen. And I went to school and lived with Josh and Gretchen during our time at Five Branches, so it's cool to see you guys thriving <laughs> now in Colorado. <laughs> So, Josh, can you kind of give just a basic rundown of, of what you do? We're both Chinese medicine people, but I always like to give an overview of my guests just so people know who you are. Yeah, so I'm an acupuncturist in Broomfield, uh, Broomfield, Colorado, and um, I do the whole spectrum of Chinese medicine, so acupuncture, herbs, mm -hmm. uh, tuina, qigong, meditation, dietetics, all that stuff. Yeah, so, the, the full kit, the whole uh, kit and caboodle. <laughs> the whole nine yards. So. Yeah. yeah. How long have you guys been in practice now in Colorado? Uh, so we've been here for about seven years. Wow. Time yeah. flies, man. Yeah. I remember when you guys first moved out there. Yeah. It goes it's, quick. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how that happens. It does, man. It moves, so, it moves fast. Yeah. Well, when you and I had sort of talked about things to, to toss around on this podcast, I've had a number of Chinese medicine people on the podcast and we've talked about a lot of different things and a lot of different <clears throat> excuse me a lot of different areas of Chinese medicine because Chinese medicine is so broad obviously and there's so many different avenues and branches that you can develop an expertise in and one of the things that you brought up what you were interested in and, and that I want to hear more about is you were talking about actually permaculture and mm -hmm. growing food and um, you mentioned dietetics, which is basically the energetics of food and, and the effect of a diet um, on a person's body. So, what? Yeah, what? What's your dialogue been with permaculture um, in relation to Chinese medicine? Like, what have you, what have you seen? What have you been doing? Uh, well, I guess I should um, backtrack a little bit. Yeah, and, paint the picture. And, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, when I was living in, in Santa Cruz, that's really when uh, I got the interest to grow my own food. Um, I grew up in Arizona, and all my food came from the store. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought that's where food comes from. <laughs> so, you know, uh, one day I was going home from school with a few classmates of mine, and, and uh, they stopped by this blackberry bush, and they just started just putting down and I was like, what are you guys doing? They're yeah. like, they're blackberries, man. They're organic and fresh. You should eat them. Yeah. I was like, you can't eat those. What are you doing? Like, that, they're, they're, they're not from the supermarket. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're on a bush. Like, right. what are you doing? And they looked at me and they're like, where, are you, where did you come from? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, and, and I, I sat there and I was like, yeah, why can't I eat these? Right. So... Uh, I tasted one, and it was probably the best blackberry that I've ever had. Um, I couldn't yep. believe how good it tasted. Mm -hmm. So that really sparked my interest. And when I moved here, I uh, had just kind of the perfect opportunity to start growing food into a vegetable garden. Had a south-facing backyard, mm -hmm. um, super sunny, yeah. no trees, just grass. And so I started with a few garden beds. And um, it was just pretty awesome, you know, mm -hmm. every year we'd have a bigger and better harvest. Um, but then I got into the whole concept of what's called a food forest. And so basically it's getting your, like, for instance, your yard to, to work for you. You set it up in a way that um, things, in a sense, just, you know, uh, work for each other. So yeah. an example of this is you set the, the, the soil up in a certain way. So what I've done is I've laid down wood chips and I've done about, uh, I'd say about six inches thick of wood chips. So that's my foundation. That's, that's the ground cover. Okay. And then mm -hmm. from there I've done fungus, I've done, um, bushes, I've done shrubs and then I've done trees like fruit trees. Wow. Everything that I've planted out there is edible, hundred percent edible. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you basically create a system that is self-sustaining. So you have the breakdown of the wood chips that enhance your soil and mm -hmm. feed your plants, that retains moisture, mm -hmm. and then you have different la layers or levels of um, your food forest that basically aid in the growth. And then as things die, uh, leaves fall, it, it's just like a forest. And wow. that's the whole concept. So you don't have to do any work. 
for the first year or so, I have to water and make sure things don't dry out. But sure. after that, once I have enough, you know, mulch and things have grown, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is go out there and just eat whatever wow. I want. So, it, in the way you're describing it, is this accurate? In the way, is this accurate? And what I'm hearing is that you're essentially creating a small ecosystem that's more or less self-sustaining and doing its own thing, so that you have as little input as possible once it's up and running. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So, like a traditional garden, right? If you have a box garden or you just grow it in the garden, yep, in, in the yard, and you're doing annuals and things like that, right? It's a lot of work. So you sow the seeds, or you get starters. You put them in. You water them every day. Um, when the season ends, you know, you dig them up, and then you kind of just cover up your dirt, or you know, get the soil ready for the next season. Well, in this case, I don't have to do anything like that. Um, they stay in the ground. I can plant things if I want, but things pretty much just grow and they fruit and then things will die back or the leaves will fall and it's all right there. Wow. And so, wh where did you get the idea for this? Was this just independent research or did someone you know, introduce it to you or what? Um, it was kind of from all different areas. As I got interested in gardening, um, how to just grow more yeah. food, yeah, um, I started doing research, and there's a lot of YouTube videos, um, a lot of really great yeah. people out there that have some really, um, you know, good videos that I've learned a lot from. Um, and I kind of followed uh, the lead of some of those videos and and some you know models, and yeah, it's pretty amazing. Within two years, I have um, it's almost self-sustained at, at this point. Wow, the YouTube era is pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty amazing. Like, yeah, you can learn learn a lot. So. Like the DIY era is very real, and YouTube's a big piece of that because there's such a plethora of educational material that you can get your hands on for free. Right. And just start right. learning and building stuff. It is pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of questions I have <laughs> as I'm thinking about this. So when you started this process, um, and you and once things are you know pretty much up and running and it's doing its own thing. What are your staple things that you're growing given the climate uh, of Colorado, where you are? Um, okay, so there was a lot of research that went into that. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now I'm in year two, really, of my uh, food forest. So a lot of things that are going to fruit have not, you know, fruited yet. Um, <coughs> so I'm hopefully by my third or fourth year that that's when I'll start having a lot of those those fruits take place. So right. uh, the staples really are, are um, foods that come back, so perennials, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to get into that, I have a few apple trees, uh, mm -hmm. two different types of apple trees. I have a pear tree, I have a peach tree, um, and then I'm working on a few other ones to go in, in the next few years. But then yeah. I also have um, more like shrubs or bushes. So I have a, a gomi berry tree, which is native to China. Mm -hmm. um, it's used in Chinese medicine. Um, I have a goji berry tree. Um, actually, I have two types. I have uh, the red goji berries and the black goji berries. Oh, uh, I've heard about the black ones. I've never tried them, though. It's amazing. You can really? make the most amazing tea, like super dark purple, um, super high in antioxidants, vitamin C. It's just like you yeah. drink it and you're just like, wow. The rich, in, I mean, if it's purple, probably rich in the anthocyanins as well, right? Those really exactly. dark pigments, yeah. 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 And for the people listening, those, <clears throat> all the things that we're talking about, the anthocyanins, the anti antioxidant profile, anti-cancer, um, good for cellular repair, um, immune response, it, it's powerful. Yeah, goji berries are a powerhouse food to, without, without question. Okay, so uh, were there more um, in addition to the ones you mentioned? Oh, the list goes on. Yeah, give me give me yeah, some more. So, you don't have to give them all, but yeah, what are some other so big ones? I have two different types of sorrel. If you're familiar with sorrel, it's kind no. of a, more like a, a green, like a leaf. Oh, okay. Um, they kind of have like a lemon flavor, and they basically you plant those once, and they come back on their own. Um, the rhubarb is another one. Obviously, mm -hmm. we use the rhubarb root in Chinese medicine known as da huang. Yeah. Um, so we have that. Um, there's, there's quite a few... Uh, I mean, I, I could just go on, but basically everything that I plant, um, I think about, okay, plant it once and then it comes back. And I try to do a lot of Chinese herbs, right? Um, things that, you know, like, like the goji berries, which is an adaptogenic herb. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do shisandra next year, which is also known as weitza. Yeah. Um, and that's really powerful as well. The, so, five, the five flavors. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, so. a, it's a powerful one. Yeah. Um, I read some cool stuff on Wu Weitza on the Shizandra about um, how it supports the, the liver in a really powerful way, apparently, yes. like, like phase one and phase two de detoxification at the same time, which is 
pretty cool that it does that because um, some foods yeah. do one you know or do the other but um, really good for the liver from what I've gathered it's fantastic for the liver can help prevent liver cancer um, mm -hmm. cirrhosis all these types of things uh, it's, it's really powerful yeah well for the people listening I mean I think nowadays right with modern farming and everything people I think for the most part you know if, if they're reasonably uh, you know, reasonably sane, <laughs> they can kind of get the behind the idea of why it's important to grow your own food. But in the context of Chinese medicine and what you do, why, you know, if people are listening like, well, why is it important and what, why is it important in Chinese medicine to be doing this? Well, on a, on a lot of levels, um, really, when you look at, you know, this entire ecosystem that you've created and it's self-sustaining, right? Um, it just grows and reproduces and you don't have to do anything. It, it's, it just functions by itself. Yep. Our bodies are pretty similar. They just need the right conditions and mm -hmm. the balance within our bodies will just happen. That's what our bodies want. Yeah. Okay. Is balance. Um, the first thing that you would see, and, and it's the concept of five elements in Chinese medicine. So, you know, when we have the five elements, you know, we think about, um, you know, earth, fire, water, metal, and um, wood. And wood, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when, when you're looking at your food forest, you have to have all those elements available in mm -hmm. order to have the ultimate growth of your forest. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, you can look at the sun. The sun represents fire. Your plants represent wood. Okay. Earth, obviously, is the foundation. Right. Um, you, you need water. And then yep. there's the met metal element, which is also air that's tied into there. Correct. So you can you can just go out and be with nature and see all those elements working mm -hmm. in unison together. Okay? Yeah. So you can start kind of seeing the connections between your body. Um, the easiest way to kind of look at it is this. When you have... Uh, you know, a garden or a food forest, the foundation is its earth, right? Yep. You have to have stable earth. The earth has to be nourished in such a way to right. to give rise to really good fruit. Or well, to, like topsoil, right? The importance of good topsoil and that kind of thing. Yes. Yep. Super, super important. Mm -hmm. If your topsoil is not there, you can't have a foundation. You can't mm -hmm. have a good root, and it's not going to nourish your plants, right? Right. So... In Chinese medicine, we have the concept of you know, people may have heard of man or earth man and heaven. Yep. Uh, we talk about the Jing Qi Shen. You know, yep. It's all the relationships. So, earth is our foundation. We're directly in the middle, and then the heaven above. Mm -hmm. If if our earth is not well supported, then our systems cannot be supported. And the same thing goes for our food. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of food that's out there today. Um, you can't really tell like exactly what the nutrition is going to be in your food. Correct. It's organic. Uh, it's grown locally. Right. You, know, you hope you hope <clears throat> for those. Things. Right. Right. But a lot of times, you know, people don't have that option to go to the store and yep. go buy local organic foods. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I'm kind of going off track here. No, no, no. You're you're like on track though, like because all these things connect really well. <laughs> It, it's first and foremost with the body. If you're trying to nourish the body, you, you need the best support system that you can get, and that comes from your food. Yep. Okay. Baseline. Your health starts with your food. Yep. If you're eating food that is lacking nutrition, uh, then, you know, what are you putting in your body? And then you see, like, all these people having to get supplements and things like that. Correct. So, right. So um, the biggest thing is, is this. It's your your soil first, your earth first. If your earth has a good foundation and it's balanced, then you have root, yes. right? So you can take from that and you can grow from that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed from doing more of the food forest permaculture yeah. model. Um, not just throwing soil in the in the box or on the ground and saying, okay, I'm going to grow food in this. Like, right? That that's you know that's like the basics. You you need much much more than that. You need the fungus. You need the bacteria. You, you need all of these things to help build your soil up so that it can nourish your food. Right. And then it can nourish you on a deeper level. And I'd like to just add to what you're saying. It's interesting. It's very interesting and makes a lot of sense. And it's interesting that 
um, the people listening that are non-Chinese medicine people, in the context of Chinese medicine, right, each of the five elements have organ relationships and associations, and the earth is related to the spleen and stomach, which yeah. is your basically the, the things that break down your food. So exactly. even in the body, uh, when we look at Chinese medicine, one of the key ideas they talk about is that classically in the five element wheel, earth was at the center. It was considered the root of all the other elements. And the other four elements uh, were on the outside of that, right? Like a spinning wheel, essentially, and earth is in the middle. So even in the theory, if we look at the classical approach, what you're saying kind of holds true is that earth is really important. It's the central cogwheel that makes the other elements yeah. move. And if you don't have earth, like you said, if you have crummy topsoil, right, you're not going to be able to grow quality food. And, um, and this follows suit in the body, you know, what they're finding now, right? If the spleen and stomach and the digestive capacity of the body goes down, like we don't produce any energy, nothing viable, Thanks. nothing. Good. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So there's some cool threads here in what you're saying. And it's also interesting, man, that makes me think about this because, um, just to relate it further is that, you know, in the context of feng shui, you're always trying to get an ideal situation, um, in our environments. Um, in the practice of Tai Chi or a movement art, you want all of the elements represented. You want all of them present. And what you were talking about in the garden is that all five elements are present. They're actively oh, yeah. in effect. And we see that um, show up in feng shui theory. We see that show up in martial arts. If you're studying the Chinese systems, yeah. they want the five elements present. And it's an ongoing theme that if the elements are present and the more contact we get with them, the healthier we are because it's it's kind of follows suit to what you're saying. It's like if they're present, you're linking up with them and they're, yes. the, they're the basis of life. They, without the elements, we are really kind of, we wouldn't have gotten very far without the elements. We, we need them. Yeah. It, it, the, the five elements are our foundation. It's They're the building blocks to life and without mm -hmm. them, we don't exist. So... Um, they're they're in everything. I mean, that's what makes us up. Right. So you know, it's very important. <clears throat> and so, what have you seen in terms of now that you're doing this and, and you're growing your own food, and you're feeding your family, and you're doing a lot more of that? I'm sure you still go to the store and get some food. Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. Sure. But you're getting um, you know a good portion of your food from this. What have you noticed in terms of your experience with your body? What's different? as a result of eating more homegrown food? Uh, first and foremost is energy and, and, and clarity. Um, so I try to do at least one meal from my food forest a day. Mm -hmm. okay? So every day I try to at least go out there and you know pick some stuff and make a meal out of it. Um, if I could do two, I do two. Um, the reason I don't do three is because busy kid work all that <laughs> yeah, stuff you have a life um, right? yes yes and yeah. sometimes we, we have to supplement other foods in. but for the most part um yeah it's it's pretty amazing because i think a lot of us you know we eat a lot of foods that are fillers mm -hmm. um, we tend to have a lot of people out there have a lot of uh, carbohydrates or processed foods mm -hmm. um that you know for the most part a lot of um like starchy foods mm -hmm. um like your white breads or pastas or things like that processed um, carbs yeah processed carbs it's it's no different than taking a bag of uh, skittles and housing that down sure. it's the same same when you look at it chemically right yeah so it's it's really the same and when you have that it really causes like a blood sugar imbalance and you, you crash mm -hmm. um the thing that i've noticed is i used to always be hungry um you know i'd eat something and i'm like i'm still hungry like I'm yeah craving something you know uh, and, and so the thing is, is when I'm eating, you know, more plant-based food from the garden, I'm getting more bulk to the system. It's mm -hmm. high in fiber, right? It's freshly cut. So it's, it's in a sense, it's super energized. It's right from the source. Yep. It's not sitting on a shelf like for a week, you know, waiting for you to consume it. Right. It's growing. You cut it, you it's pluck there. it or whatever, and you put it in your dish and you eat it. It's it's a pretty amazing feeling when you do that on a regular basis Yeah, that you can actually feel <clears throat> what's going on within your body and how you're digesting the food. Um, I'll give you an example. So I grow a lot of herbs as well. I do different mints, like uh, I do lemon balm. Mm -hmm. So lemon balm is really good because it calms the system down. Okay. It's very soothing. It mm -hmm. helps with like anxiety and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, can help with sleep and, and other disorders. And so, um, 
as I became more sensitive to the food that I was eating, um, I'll, I'll never forget that I said, well, you know, I'm going to make some lemon balm tea from the garden. Yeah. And you, know, you take those first few sips and it's, it's just... Oh. Yeah. It's way different than having a tea bag or even dried herbs. You get the oils, you know, from, from the fresh herbs. Yeah. And you take them and it's, it has a completely different effect on your whole nervous system. Yep. So it's pretty amazing. Well, one of the key threads that you're talking about is this is this notion of, you know, the vital essence of food, right? The living, yep. the, what, what they call qi in Chinese medicine. This is like a, yep. a piece of what uh, American culture doesn't really touch on. And, you know, nowadays with the New Age movement, sometimes this term gets, you know, kind of overly mysticized. But when we're talking about the inherent vitality, we can all, I mean, science proves plants are living. They are alive. They oh, have yeah. live cellular activity. And so it only follows suit that the moment you cut it, right, that the plant begins to degrade and die because it's no longer connected to its root or its source. But um, like anything else, you know, when you eat fresh fish right out of the ocean, it oh, yeah. tastes very different than when fish has been sitting around for two or three days. And the Chinese believe, as does Ayurveda, that you're getting that subtle energy that's still in the plant, like the living vitality that's still there as a result of you plucking it fresh. And I remember when I was in Santa Cruz and I had a few different experiences where I was living on houses that were growing, you know, their own food. They had eggs, you know, from chickens. They had a uh, chard and, you know, arugula and cilantro. And I was amazed at how much less I had to eat to get full. Exactly. The volume exactly. was way less. I'm like, so I'm pretty, I'm not physically full. Like my stomach wasn't stretched out. But I just didn't want to eat anymore. It's um, right. I was surprised by that. And when you shop at the supermarket, even organic, the quantity of food is just higher. Like I have to eat a little more than if the food was raw and fresh. You, know, you pluck, yeah. pluck it and eat it. Has that been true for you as well? Oh, absolutely, hundred um, percent. I can go out there, you know, for lunchtime and, and just, you know, I'll just pick a few things <clears> and <throat> snack on it and. And honestly, like, I'm like, you know what? I feel okay. I don't feel like I need anything else. Yeah. And and that's fine. You know, I'll pull a few carrots, maybe a beet, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, snack on that. Maybe sure. some squash or zucchini or whatever. Yeah. And that's more than enough, um, you know. And, and I feel like you, you don't really know that that is possible unless you take time to do something like that and just sit with it and yeah. see how you feel, you know. Most of us are in such a hurry to get the next meal down. We're just scarfing it down, yep. whether it's in the middle of work or whatever. You know, we overeat. Absolutely. And, and then it becomes you know a detriment to the body, and, and, and we don't necessarily want to do that. So, what would you say is the time commitment on a week-to-week -week basis? Like, how much time are you spending, quote unquote, in your garden? Well, in the summertime, and because it's only my second year, I'm probably spending about 30 minutes um, just going around and making sure that, you know, things are orderly. Um, yeah. I try not to have um, any, like, yeah, dead leaves or yeah. anything like that. So I try to take care of those and make sure I look for pests um, just to, to stay on top of it. And then, of course, I do have to water a few things. It gets pretty hot here, so I try mm -hmm. to make sure that things are watered. But really, that's about it. 30 minutes at the most a day. Um, I could probably do less than that yeah. um, if I really wanted to. And, and then within a few years, I won't, I won't have to do anything. Yeah, so, that's great. I mean, you're, yeah. you're putting in your time now to right. tend to it and to get it up and running so it's self-sufficient more or less. Have you, um, have you noticed or is this sort of a full circle loop? Because I know your, your um, undergrad, wasn't it in nutrition or something that tied to – was it nutrition? Did you have yeah. – uh, exercise physiology, but nutrition was a huge portion, portion of it. So. Right. And do you feel like, I mean, with that knowledge, because even when we first met years back and we were training uh, Gung Fu and living together, part of your um, dialogue at that time was just, you know, you, we were talking, we were always kind of talking about like, yeah, the importance of carbohydrates, the importance of protein, good fats. And now growing your own food, does that, does that feel like a full circle? Like the things you kind of studied now you're actually doing in real time and, you know, growing your own stuff and really applying what you kind of learned? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there's a science to it, right? Sure. Um, it, when you get into nutrition and, and things like that, food is chemistry. Yeah. I mean, when you break it down, it's a chemical reaction yep. in your body. Right. Uh, but I tend to kind of look at the bigger picture. 
So mm-hmm. um, instead of the micro, I'm more macro about it. Mm-hmm. And and when I interact with the food, it's it's much different than you know. Oh, I need to have this many carbs or this much sure. fat or that sure. much protein. That's changed quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, really, it's you know it, again, it's going out into the garden, picking some things, eating some things, and seeing how I feel. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I try to discuss with a lot of people that I work with is that you know eat things and see how you feel about 20 minutes after you eat it right you feel like you're gonna fall asleep right after you eat something that's not good for you yeah I mean I mean hands down yep. you should eat something and you should feel alive right mm-hmm. you should feel really good like oh, energized I'm very energized you should have clarity you should be able to get up and go do whatever you want mm-hmm. uh, but a lot of people you know, they have their meal, and even if they're they're sticking to a diet plan, right? Oh, I'm not going to have this many carbs, and have this much protein, and have a ton of fat. You know, like sure. kind of the trend trend today, sure. which is fine. It's all really good, but people still get really tired, or they still gain weight, mm-hmm. you know, or they have all these issues that are still tied with it. And, and my yeah. biggest thing is, is try some food, and then wait 20 minutes and see how you feel. Yeah. Again, if you're not feeling good, like sit with it, feel it in your body, right? Mm-hmm you'll know your body's going to tell you because what you eat ultimately becomes you. Yeah. It you make know? it. So. Yeah. Quite literally. I mean, that's, that's, it's that cliche thing, right? You are what you eat. I mean, your body yeah. is, but that's what your body does break down to make itself is that the, you know, the quality, that's the basic tenet of, you know, in Chinese medicine that we know about. It's the air you breathe, the water yep. you drink, the food you eat and the thoughts you think or the thoughts yep. and the emotions you experience. Like all these things make the conglomerate picture of, human being you know yeah so it's important absolutely and um this piece that you know you're talking about like i i it's it is interesting because i feel like it ties you into the living aspect of chinese medicine and it puts you into dialogue with the five element theory and the more you do this i mean you can you can say i'm sure right that as a result of you dialoguing with the five elements through the context of your garden your life is you know your life force is bolstered right like you have more energy you have a um, better quality of life as a result of growing your own food and eating it and getting that experience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it connects you in a deeper level with really everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're observing nature in such a way and you're, you're, you're taking from nature yeah. um, to you know enhance yourself or to just keep yourself going, right? Right. Um, you, you see a lot of things when you're doing that. So one of the first things that I noticed you know, starting this sort of garden mm-hmm. was, the, was the bugs. Yeah. You know, you, there's a lot of bugs. And so yeah. there's a lot of life out there. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll tell my family, that, you know, go outside and just, you know, sit on the ground and just stare at it for just a minute. And you'll just see that everything is just like moving. Like yeah. there's just stuff everywhere, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Our bodies are the same way. Microbes. You can't see it. Microbes, right? yeah. They're all over. Bugs, yeah. The good and the bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that's like kind of the first layer, you know, there's just, there's life, life mm-hmm. everywhere. And our bodies are just full of life. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just not dead flesh. Okay. It's yeah. life. Yeah. So you respect the life a little bit differently. You see that, you know, you're not separate from it. Like all these things that we try to separate ourselves from. <clears throat> and I use bugs as an example because most people get a bug in their house and they're going to smash it, you know? So, yeah. But when you see it in that context, it's like, wow, there's so much life to this that's keeping me alive, right? Mm-hmm. So you have the insects working, the, the bacteria, the fungus, and all that stuff is, is there. And so there's a certain amount of um, compassion that you have you know, yeah. for these other creatures that are helping break down the, the things that make earth mm-hmm. so that your food can grow. Right, they're yeah, working. They're working it. with you to create life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the food is alive. You're going to be eating it, so the quality of what they're doing is, you know, going to be helping you in the exactly. in the big picture. No, it's really cool, <clears throat> and I'm glad that you're doing it um, because, for one, it opens the dialogue, and it's a thing that I think nowadays people are starting. And we're kind of, I think, in the bigger picture with the population that we have on the planet. It almost seems like growing food is going to become a necessity at some point so that we're not just reliant on, you know, mega farms 
to funnel food to supermarkets where everyone buys from. I mean, it would change things considerably if people were growing more of their own food. And I think the health um, of the country and, you know, if, if everyone was growing their own food, we would have a different health dynamic in this country. That is for sure. Well, I think it's something that needs to happen, um, mm -hmm. not just because it's something that I enjoy doing. Sure. But yeah, the population is going to explode. It's it's going to go way beyond anything that we can imagine mm -hmm. as far as numbers in this planet. And uh, even, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, if we <coughs> think about our natural resources, we're going to have less than half of the water that we have now, like available fresh water, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, if our water goes down, like fresh water that mm -hmm. we need to grow with, right? Mm -hmm. We we can't grow our food. We can't have giant farms right. growing food. It's just not possible because the water's not there. Mm -hmm. So with a food forest, you plant more trees. And if everybody starts planting more trees, then you actually can have access. There's more water. Yeah. With trees, there's water. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So the trees, in a sense, you know, they create the weather. Right. Okay. So, yeah, it's. I think it's going to be something of the future that if you want to eat healthy, you have to grow your own food because right. our resources are dwindling and really we're not doing enough to, to make, you know, those numbers go up. Right. No, there's some there's some larger implications here that are worth exploring just in, yeah. just in growing your own food. Um, Josh, when you – I know, I mean, your diet from the time I met you till now – is very different. Like you, you were a, you know, not never like a horrible eater by any means, but you definitely ate like heavier, richer foods when I met you many years back. And um, to see your evolution to where you are now, where you have you have a deep connection and reverence to your food, and your palate is just healthier. I can tell. Like you're you're much more plugged into those healthier foods. So it's really powerful to see the, the transformation to see that you know like you said you know you thought supermarkets are where food comes from right like and then to go to this is is i mean that's cool that's really interesting to see and to see how much you've gained from it um in this larger picture it's really interesting that you've taken it this far well you know what it really comes down to is when i'm working with people you know and, and I, we discuss their diet the first time that they come in mm -hmm. and you know, the responses that I get, it's just like, wow, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the amount of people that are going to McDonald's and going to Wendy's and all these, these fast food joints on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, daily. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't question it. They don't question it at all. Yeah, like, where good. is their food coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that's a real problem. And, and even Agreed. the food that people buy in the stores, you know, isn't stuff that's going to su support them in a way that they need yeah. so that they can become healthy. They come in with these concerns, but these concerns are created by the food that they're eating. Yep. Right? And so it takes those changes to, you know, make those changes within yourself. Um, so I think it's really important to talk about and, and bring uh, a certain awareness to people that it, it could be something that, you know, you want to learn in the future because it will be beneficial to your family and your kids. Yeah, to say the so. least. <clears throat> and like I said, it's going to, like you said, also, it's probably going to become a necessity in the future as, as time goes on and population goes up and demands on the planet. And we have to be giving something back if we want to get something from Earth. There's going to, there's exactly. going to, there's going to have to be some give back. That's absolutely true. And I, I think about this too, the rhythm um, that it produces for people, people that I know that are, have really strong green thumbs and who are consistently in their garden and who are actively tilling Earth and just spending time outside – you know, the stress levels, their demeanor, um, their attitude, the amount of exercise they get, all yep. of those things are naturally just bumped up and improved as a result of spending more time outside, tending Absolutely. to things. It gives you activity. You have to think. You, you're, you know, it, there's, a, there's a therapeutic thing to just being outside and tending to food and understanding your relationship to the land. And that, exactly. that land gives back to you. It puts you into a... It's an important thing to remember because we are forgetting. We're, we're, you know, we're all just climate controlled, you know, cool LED lights. You know, we got, we're, right. we're all in our environments, just so nestled, and we're not connecting with these rhythms that are quite literally life giving. And I think that's a, that's what's so interesting about what you're doing. You know, when <coughs> when I was bringing up the the diet piece, 
And this also kind of brings me to, I had questions about your, your meditation practice just in the larger context. You know, that's like been a big thread for you. Um, you know, you and I met originally through acupuncture and martial arts, and then you have been a devout meditator for such a long time. And I remember years, a few years back, you were just saying how meditation has actually kind of brought you to a place of stability and peace that you hadn't found in the martial arts. Like you were training martial arts, right, for physical prowess and strength and physicality, but there was still, um, you know, that deeper itch of just feeling at ease wasn't fully there from the martial training, but it seems like you've really bridged into finding that more and more, especially in recent years through the practice of meditation. Can you just talk about that process a little bit from going from, you know, martial arts and trying to find the inner core and then sitting still and finding the inner core? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, when I started martial arts, uh, it was a great foundation. I was searching, you know, for something. Mm -hmm. um, just before I had done martial arts, I was dabbling in the whole idea of meditating or trying to figure out what meditating is all about. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I started some Tai Chi and Qigong, and, mm -hmm. and I was just like, wow, you know, this is some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, and and it, it was pretty awesome, um, just moving the body and, and just, you know, getting the exercise a lot different from Western exercise and, and mm -hmm. the, you know, the theories behind it and how we can exercise in such a way that's not depleting and yeah. that actually is supporting <clears throat> nourishing right. to our body. Right. Uh, so that kind of took a hold of me for a long time, and I got kind of, I would say, more obsessed with, um, you know, the whole movement and, you know, the, the, just kind of the culture behind Chinese martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see a connection at the time, really, through 15 years of training martial arts. I never saw a connection um, to meditation, mm -hmm. um, and, and I do now. Yeah, uh, but d during that time, it was yeah, it was a lot of um, self growth and, <laughs> yeah. and on, on different levels. Okay? Yeah, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I was always still searching for mm -hmm. that meditative aspect. And um, you know, every time I did martial arts, you know, I was, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting to that piece. You know, yeah, and yeah. It just was never there. Yep. Um, and then. I had, you know, finally kind of stepped outside of the whole martial arts realm and was really looking into, like, you know, Zen uh, Buddhism mm -hmm. um, and uh, Tibetan Buddhism and just different types of meditation and yeah. reading a lot of books and, and this and that. And I finally found, uh, I, I, I do Isha Yoga, which has meditation in it, and um, I started doing that, and it was kind of like, uh, there was almost like this... Uh, you know, realization to, okay, this is meditation. Like I finally got that little piece. Mm -hmm. And, and when, not that I, I, I learned meditation or that I found meditation, what happened was I, I became meditative. Right. Um, it was more of like, I found this quality and mm. this quality isn't just about sitting right. And just closing your eyes and trying right. to cl clear your mind. But being meditative is a quality that you can bring in all aspects of your being. And to me that it just sunk with me like so much. And yeah. the, the meditation or going into meditation is just kind of exploring that at a deeper level and keeping it consistent in your life. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I transitioned into that and it just has had a real profound effect on how I live and um, how I, uh, you know, interact you know, with the external world because my internal yeah. world is now at a different place. Mm -hmm. uh, internally, even with the martial arts, I was, sure, you know, just kind of all over the place where sure. when I became more meditative, things were just like that. Mm -hmm. And so what I found is that, you know, we as human beings, we're always trying to go in all these different directions, you know, yep. we want to do this and do that and I'm bored. I got to do something. You the know, list, the list is long, man. Yeah. Everyone's got a checklist of like, Oh, I got to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. It's doesn't stop. Right. So the thing is the mind, it, it's always running. But when the mind stops running, 
then you can just be present. You can just be here. Mm-hmm. And and when I found that quality of just being here, and not doing anything, uh, knowing within myself that I don't have to do anything, that I can just sit here and it's okay. I don't have to go anywhere. I yeah. can just sit here and it's perfectly fine. That was just, <laughs> it, it brought a lot of peace. It yeah. brought a lot of peace to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, you know, the thing is, is for, for those that have young children, mm-hmm. you know, um, being an, an adult and having a, a child around, it's like your kid's like, you know, they oh, do dude. whatever. Pandemonium, right? bro. Yeah. It's crazy. Pandemonium. And you're, you're a, as an adult, you're like, okay, I got to do these things. And I'm like, yep. ah, I'm trying to spend time with my kid and whatever. Yeah. But, but it just all comes back. Like when you meditate, when you become meditative, right? You just sit down and you hang out with them and you be present with them because they're perfectly present and they're perfectly joyful. Nothing's going on, right? Yeah. Other than they're just happy. And right. And it's, so it's like we get in, we can just get into that state and it's pretty amazing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's it, been many levels to it. Yeah. No, I know. And it's, it's, I mean, the, the transition, you know, seeing, like I said, seeing where, even when you talked about your younger days, you know, in your youth and, you know, you did bodybuilding for God's sakes and, right. you, you know, and you ate heavier foods and, um, and just to watch how you've evolved and, you know, the introduction of Chinese medicine and how you have, like all of us, right? I feel like if we're in Chinese medicine or you take up Ayurveda or you took up some, some health system that has um, a, tr- a living tradition and you attempt to start living it in certain areas, you know, like we're all plugging into it in different ways. But when you start living it, it's it's remarkable the transformative effect it has on the person to see where a person starts. And if they start exploring these themes, it really does transform things and life becomes nourished. What they call Yangshen, you know, which is basically yes. where it's nourishing life. You are tending to these rhythms and you're tending to the things around you and it does start to create something pretty beautiful um, very slowly and very methodically over many many years but um, I've liked watching you go through yours <clears throat> just given the places where you told me where you started right. and to just see it, it's like wow you really have just gone through this and like done some really cool things and your health and your mind and you know your spirit have just benefited tremendously so it's a testament to I think to the, the lineage of knowledge and then also just to your, you know, your dedication. You're, you're sticking with it too. You're not just, you're actively pursuing it, which I, I, I appreciate. And I think it's, um, gives you a grounding cord, man, as you're treating people too, because you're, you're living these pieces. You know, it's not just theory for you. You're starting, right. you're starting to get real time experience. It seems like at yeah. least. Would you say that's accurate? <laughs> I would, I would. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's very accurate. You know, yeah. the, the thing is, is when you start working on yourself in <clears throat> those different ways, whether mm-hmm. it be, you know, cultivating your own food, meditation, martial yeah. arts, yep. um, you you exercise a lot of internal demons and mm-hmm. um, you have to break through a lot of things, you know. Um, so there's a certain amount of wisdom and understanding that comes out from that. Yeah. And um, by having that, you, you have the ability to work with others on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. So. Have you explored with your, I guess with the, with the stuff you're growing, have you done much with fermented foods at all? Or are you touching that at all? Or are you just sticking to just sort of the eating and cooking the foods that you make? Other than or, other than kombucha, that's about <laughs> it. So Fair enough. That's a whole another level. So. Well, yeah, that's the <laughs> we start really diving into the whole bugs, right? The microbes and the. Right. But well, I know. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you. You know, so like having wood chips on the ground, mm-hmm. you can grow a tremendous amount of different types of fungus. Yeah, what, and, what are you growing in terms of mushroom? What, what are you so doing? you can do uh, wine cap mushrooms, okay? Oh, um, nice. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of on hold because I've had so many different types of fungus pop up <laughs> that I'm a little worried that the young one might go over and see, you know, if we start eating something, that she'll just start picking anything and eat it. So, yeah. um, but I'm working on an area in the garden to have, you know, certain funguses that we can harvest and cook. So mm-hmm. wine cap uh, mushrooms are the first ones that I'm going to do. They're the easiest ones to grow. You yeah. get spores. You just put it out after a big rain. They pop up overnight, and yeah. then you can harvest and eat them. So, uh, but you can get you can get into a lot of different other funguses and uh, like you know the really healthy ones like linger, you know, Ganoderma. Yeah. Um, 
so you know i don't know I, i'll have to see if i can grow that here yeah because it, i think it needs a little bit more of a moist environment but, right um yeah you can do those sort of things have you tracked so. um have you tracked any of paul stamets stuff oh yes yes that guy's awesome that guy's so. a wizard man when in yeah. his whole you know when you're talking about the mushrooms and the, the pivotal role they play in a food forest, obviously, but in an ecosystem and how profoundly important they are in on the planet. I mean, they do so much, but the mycelium networks and how they allocate resources to trees and how they're regulating within the soil. And they're so, they're like the immune system. You know, they're just, they're in there fixing every little thing that they can. And, and again, it just points to why we should be eating them and the importance of, I mean, it, as soon as you said that, I thought, God, that makes so much sense why you would need mushrooms in the mix. Oh, like, it's so important. They're breaking down everything, right? I mean, they're like. If you go, if you go out into the yard and you start kind of digging back the wood chips, uh-huh. you're going to see the mycelium everywhere. Wow. It's the white, this light white spider network that's going to all the trees. It branches out through the whole forest out there. So wow. it's, it's, you have this kind of like this dirt level, you know, that's kind of sub level. Then you have kind of like this more like denser soil. It's more nourished, dark soil. And yeah. then you have all that on top of it. And it's breaking down the wood chips and all the other, you know, things that yeah. are out there. So it's, it's fascinating. You know, one of the <clears throat> anecdotal things that I've, I've seen, and I'm sure you have too, but, you know, I've, I've been to friends' houses. I've been on properties um, growing up when I was living in Santa Cruz where a tree gets cut down and you have the stump and then the mushrooms grow into it and it pulverizes it into dust. I mean, it becomes just the most crumbly, dry mulch of sorts. And it just is a testament to what they do. They're like, well, this thing has died, so we're going to decompose it and take care of it and make it usable, you know, make it like break it down so the nutrients can go back into the soil. So that living network of pieces just, I mean, it's so cool to see... Yeah, how that works. Um, well, Josh, with this, you know, some cool threads here. You've got your, your 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 food forest that you've got. You know, we touched on the meditation piece. We've touched on the martial arts. You know, in Chinese medicine, one of the things I'm always talking to people about, or at least I'm trying to guide people to um, in their own process as well, is looking for the common thread, looking for the confluence among disciplines, right? The 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 com- What's the same? And if there was, I mean, I, and it might be a question you can't even answer because I, I, I'm still kind of flushing it out for myself, but do you feel like after touching on, you know, Chinese medicine, you're working with herbs, you're growing your own food, um, you know, you, you've, you've done Tai Chi, you've done martial arts, you're a devout meditator. Is there a common thread uh, between these things? Is there some, um, it, it, and if there is, like, what would you, how would you put that to words? Is there a common thread to all of these things that's like, what's the same, I guess, in all of this stuff? So as far as uh, meditation, yeah, gardening, like, yeah, yeah, like the things that you're doing, because I, I think I'll kind of give give you a frame of reference for for me, um, and you can still hear me. You froze, but as long as you can hear me, we're good okay. still. Yeah, there you go. You're back. Okay. Um, yeah. So so when I am uh, like in feng shui, right? You're trying to get the five elements. So when I play with environments, I'm trying to get the five elements represented. Um, you know, when I do Tai Chi, I'm doing the same thing. When I'm cooking, I'm, I'm thinking of colors and I'm thinking of, uh, of flavors. So I'm looking for, for me, you know, like the five elements are a common thread, but, um, I am always sort of trying to find like, what am I really doing here? Like, what am I, what is this thing that I'm sort of searching for? Because it is kind of elusive. I'm like, yes, it's nourishing life. It's these things, but I'm always trying to find a common thread. But some people say it's different. They're like, you know, it's, um, some people it's kind of like, they enjoy all of these things and that's the common thread you know for other people it's um it's different but i was just curious if there has been a common thread between all of these different avenues that you're going through well i think enjoying is is definitely a a good description Um, yeah you you should at least enjoy them ideally right (laughs) why would you do that yeah Uh, but for me all these different aspects that i've brought into my life um it there it it really becomes more meditative on mm-hmm. all levels and yeah. whether it's sitting or moving uh, meditation it, it's very meditative so when I interact with my garden um, you know it's it's really just being present and 
and observing everything, just really like being in tune and yeah. and being with it, right? Being mm-hmm. with the food, being with nature, mm-hmm. being with the five elements. Where where if it's transition transitioning into meditation, it's it's being present within myself, yeah. right? So being just with myself on an internal level, mm-hmm. so being present there. And when it's martial arts, being present again within your body and mind, yeah. but on a level that where you know you're moving in such a way, and you know you're doing these different things, they're really all the same, mm-hmm. right? You can yeah, you really put them all together. So I guess you could say it's a very Zen approach. Yeah, you know, yeah, it uh, is. It's just it's a mental way of being. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I think being joyful or, or enjoying it. Um, is a big piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I would say why am I doing it. I think if uh, you know, I had to question why am I doing it. It's really to become more in tune. Mm-hmm. That's why I do it. Yeah, to, be, to be more sensitive in a, in a way. Yeah, it, that's more of reality, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, most most of the people nowadays walk around their phones, you know, and and I know. you know that. There's so much going on yeah. that they're not paying attention to everything around them. Mm-hmm. And these practices make you more aware of the, the greater reality. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's really important. And, and before yeah. we, we leave this, this plane, this earth, whatever you want yeah. to call it, yeah. uh, we, we experience life. And mm-hmm. we experience not only life on the outside in the garden, but life within right and and life with others and you can say that with martial arts you're you're doing martial arts you're working with other you know people and and you're interacting on a deep level right so yeah well this is kind of my like my last question then we'll kind of get into like a a summary of of the stuff that we've talked about but um when you you know you and i share a common thread that we both have trained uh, what we would call like hard martial arts, where we've like we've sparred, uh, we've done you know, some full contact stuff, we've um, been in the more yang expression of martial arts uh, in our youth, and then you know as we got in, and by older, right, as in our late twenties and early thirties and into our thirties now, we've we found um, you know the, the softer arts. We I moved into teaching tai chi, <clears throat> you you as well tai chi, doing things like that, but this process of um, you know, meditation, growing your own food, and and meditating. How has it changed your approach to martial arts, or are you looking um, for different styles of martial arts, or what what has changed your palate in terms of the martial art uh, flavors, if 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 it has at all? That's a good question. Yeah, because I I chew on it all the time myself, so I'm curious, and we share some common threads. So I would love to. <laughs> selfishly, I want to know <laughs> your thoughts. <laughs> When, you know, before, I think there was always different um, levels. Every time I was training something, there Mm -hmm. was maybe a different reason why I was doing it or why I thought I was doing it. So I think that there's different levels. Um, I, when I, when I do a martial art, whether it's the more yang external style or more of the yin internal style, however you want to describe it. I, I ask myself, well, what what is the purpose of doing this? Yeah. Because ultimately, you know, when you do something, you're doing it for some reason. So most yeah. people are like, what am I going to gain from this experience, right? Like, Correct. what is going to come from this? Yeah, what am I getting there? Yeah. Exactly. And I think at this point in my life, um, you know, I've done a lot of, uh, you know, more external style and then the, the you could call it yin style. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, with the Yang style, it was like, well, I got to do this for self-defense. And, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, if something happens, I'm ready, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's more of the internal style where it's like, yeah, I want to really nourish and cultivate. And I want to help support my body. Mm -hmm. Um, What's come nowadays is really when I go to do something, I do it in such a way that I'm doing it to help support my body on a deep physical level. And also on a deep mental level, yeah. there's an energetic level to it, but really it's, you know, everybody's different. It's your own experience. But when it comes down to it, like when I do something, I'm doing it to support my health or my body or, you know, my mental stability. Mm-hmm. And so I'll do different things to help focus on different areas, um, yep. to, you know, that may be out of balance or, or 
or not. So I don't. That's that's a great answer, man. And <clears throat> I think what's cool about at least I mean I think you and I can both appreciate what is beautiful and elegant about the Chinese internal system is systems is that they have the fighting application is in there fully, mm -hmm. but then also enmeshed and built into it, should you want to turn the dial down, is you can go into these deeper, more um, introspective and sensitive building approaches, you know, that build sensitivity in the mind and the body and, and your awareness so that they can become completely cathartic and therapeutic as you do them. And then if you want to right, turn up the volume and ratchet up the speed, you can like take it there. But I've always liked that, 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 that you have that option. Because sometimes right. in the external systems, it's like one speed, you know, whoop ass. You know, it's like, it's like, what? <laughs> like that's what's happening, you know, like, <laughs> right. like that's the that's one it. thing you're doing. And yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's got its merit. But I think it's just really nice that like the, the, the Chinese systems have this, you know, this, stuff, this they're built in. And it yeah. gives you that freedom to explore and to um, get into that depth. Because I've seen with my Tai Chi students, you know, some of my, I've been teaching Tai Chi in Sacramento for four years this summer and consistently. And I have the, the students that started with me four years ago, many of them are still with me or they, you know, they'll come and come and go. But a lot of them are like consistent. And it's just kind of crazy because it's like we're still working on the same seven minute form. Right. But what are we chewing right, right now? Like what are we doing in terms of. Um, you know, developing that sensitivity and it's like, it's built into it. You know, it's built in just by doing the movements. When I, when I'm, when I'm, when I feel my teaching is getting stale, all I have to do is just train the form more. And I start to right. get hits now. I'm like, Oh, right. There's stuff in there. That's what I'll talk about tonight. Or that's what I'll explore. And it's kind of cool that it's built in, you know, which I think it truly is. Yeah. It's been one of the coolest pieces. And I think you've, you've had that same type of thing, you know, or variation of that. It seems like in your experience. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's really interesting because the more that you study something, the more you spend time with it, the deeper you can go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, there's the martial aspect. You can go really, really deep with that. And it is it is ultimately super important for the styles that we train. You have to sure. have some understanding of that. Sure. Um, but when you take it to that level, you know, where you want to spend more time with it and you just keep training it, yep. it's like all of a sudden there's like these little like doors that just kind of open up and yep. it's like, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, you know, there's there's some goodies, there's some goodies in there. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, so. Well, Josh, you know, we've touched on a lot of things, but we've touched on, you know, the threads that are living for you, you know, in terms of, the, of your, you know, Chinese medicine path and whatnot. If you were to, you know, people that are coming and listening to this podcast for the first time, say they have no frame of reference to Chinese medicine and they haven't done permaculture and they haven't um, even dabbled in any of the things that we're talking about. You know, if you were, I know you work with a lot of um, patients, you know, you're, you're an acupuncturist and you guys have a really busy clinic and you're seeing a lot of people, but for people listening, what, you know, if you were to leave people with sort of parting, a parting idea or parting, um, you know, um, yeah, a parting idea for people to sort of engage this process you know what's baby steps that people can do to sort of light the pilot light in terms of you know being healthy you know living these principles like what's the simple things that people can do to kind of just start this process really self-awareness and mm -hmm. uh, a certain level of consciousness um, that you bring to your your being um, chinese medicine is all about prevention right mm -hmm. uh, if you go back into the classics you know, they talk about like what to do and what not to do. And, sure. You know, you can get into that and it, there's a lot of philosophy, you know, with that stuff. And, and I, you know, to me, that's a foundational piece in Chinese medicine. So for anybody that wants to get into Chinese medicine or, you know, these things, it's bringing more awareness to yourself mm -hmm. and, and not really living um, kind of, I don't know, you know, like a robot in society. Yeah. Most people, you know, they, they're, you know, doing something, they've got to work, you know, they're sporting family, they got to go to school. Everybody's just on this path where, you know, they, they just go, 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 and they got to do these things. Um, slow down a little bit, pay attention, pay attention to mm -hmm. the things in your life and that you're doing, because everything that you do has an effect on your body, mm -hmm. right? Physically and mentally. So the food that you're eating, the thoughts that you're thinking, the activities that you're doing all play a role on your body and your body's health, but your mental health as well. Mm -hmm. So when we slow down and we pay attention and we kind of just say, okay, 
like right now, right? Like we're sitting in chairs as we talk. The cushion on these seats have an effect on our body. So yeah. you can tune into that. It's the, the most simplest thing that I tell people. Start with that, right? Yeah. Because a lot of times I see people <clears throat> come in, you know, for tendonitis in their elbow, you know, because sure. either they're hold the ro- ro- remote control for four <laughs> hours in one position. Or, or this, or this, right? bro, like... Exactly. Glued to a phone with their head down for all, yeah, half the day, yeah. So, so pay attention. Pay attention to what you're doing and be aware of it. Mm-hmm. And so when you bring awareness to yourself, you ultimately are in charge of your own health and healing. Yeah. And that's really important. And I think that is the first and foremost thing because really, if you're taking care of those things and you're being conscious of these things that you're doing in your life, you can prevent a lot of disease and disorder. Mm-hmm. Maybe not external issues, you know, sure. that you may contract something, but most disease happens from within, mm-hmm. whether it's diabetes, heart disease, you know, uh, these things happen, they're created from within us. And first and foremost, food. Secondarily, mm-hmm. we're, not, we're not moving, yeah. right? We're not doing, you know, the right activities. Mm-hmm. So we can change all these <clears> things by being aware and being more conscious. And, and not, you know, succumbing to our, our you know, compulsions and, you mm-hmm. know, being compulsive, you know, like, uh, just, you know. Yeah, and sensation. impulsive, right? Yeah. And impulsive, right? Yeah. And all these things. So yeah. that's the biggest thing I tell people is just yeah. try to be a little bit more aware, you know. Yeah. And, and, and maybe for some people it's like just know that you're like this all the time and maybe put your phone away, right? And just start realizing that there's other stuff going on. And then you can pay more attention to what's going on within. That's a big piece, man, because I, you know, with the technological era, you know, these, a lot of tech companies, they really, they really um, develop key strategies and really push to, everything is about keeping our attention, right? Devices are about, you know, um, YouTube, Instagram, social media. It's all about what keeps our attention and keeps us engaged. And when we disconnect from that, fundamentally and we we're not as tuned into this thing you know these phones that we carry around all the time and that are with us at every moment when that happens we're left to our own devices a little bit it's easier to be aware of your environment of of your body so i think that's a piece of it too is just removing some of the stimulus that we get all the time but i think it's really good sound advice very sound advice and simple so i appreciate that for you for you saying that josh if people want to um track you know, you and Gretchen, you know, your wife and, um, and they want to, you know, see what cloud CloudGate is doing. What's the, where can people find you? Where, where, if they want to kind of, you know, tune in with you and just drop in and see what, you know, you guys are doing, how do they, what's the best way? Uh, easiest way is going to be through our website. So that's cloudgatehealingarts.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a Facebook at cloudgate healing arts. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't do a ton of social media. Um, mm-hmm. we try to limit yeah. the in, amount of time. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, yeah, the best way to connect uh, with us is via our website and find out what we're doing if we're having workshops or if you want to come in for sessions, things like that. So Very cool. Yeah. Well, Josh, man, thank you for thank you for dropping the knowledge, you know, sharing what you're doing and, and the pieces the the gems that we were you were willing to share with um, the stuff that you're doing. It's really helpful, man. I, you know, it's a it's really neat to see what you're doing and there are some very real threads here that I think people can benefit from. You know, there's some things here that we can all glean, and um, I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's definitely, man. A pleasure. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, likewise, buddy. Okay, man. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care.